Hey everybody, it's Brooke with The Buttered Home and welcome to my messy kitchen. Today we have one of my most favorite nostalgic treats of a recipe to share with you. All my growing up life, I know y'all have heard me say it before, my mother is a fantastic cook and she is partly responsible for making me love cooking the way that I do. Uh, and she has some very special signature dishes. I mean, there are people who still to this day who ask for things that she makes specifically like her uh, pimento cheese, uh, her cheese straws. And you know, there's something to be said. No matter what I cook, if it's her recipe, it's always better when mama cooks it. It just is. And today we are gonna be sharing with you one of my childhood favorites that I affectionately like to call Glory Jean's Cherry Lemon Cheesecake Pie. Now, Glory Jean is my mama, and y'all will see her live on here a lot. She and my daddy are some of my biggest supporters, and I just don't know what I would do without them. I am so thankful for them. They just celebrated their 55th wedding anniversary, and I think that that's something to celebrate. So in their honor, Tonight, I am sharing my favorite recipe and probably one of my brothers too, because whenever mama made this, we knew that it was a special occasion. This is her cherry cheesecake pie. I love you, mama. Y'all stay tuned. Uh, first of all, what we did beforehand is we made our graham cracker crust and let us show you now how we did that. So hang tight. All right, here's how you make a simple graham cracker pie crust. I mean, it just doesn't get any easier than this. And I do all my mixing right in my pie pan. <laughs> I know some people will scoff at that, but um, it means less dishes that I have to clean up. So that's better for me. So we have one and a half cups of graham cracker crumbs. You can either um, make these yourself or you can buy them like me the lazy way and go ahead and, <laughs> and just pour them out of a bag. And then we have a half a cup of sugar. And y'all ignore Millie, she's needy today. She went to the beauty shop this morning and she just hadn't been the same since. So you just wanna mix the sugar and the graham crackers really well. And if you have any lumps, clumps, or anything like that, just, just mix those up. And then we have five tablespoons of melted butter. Yum. And I just drizzle that right over the top and mix it up. Now, here is the mistake that a lot of people make. It doesn't look like enough butter, right? Trust me, you just have to keep working with it. And it is. And I like to do this with just a regular tablespoon so that I can kind of push that butter around into those loose graham crackers. Now, where I say most people mess this up, I'm referring to myself. As a young cook, I poured that five tablespoons of melted butter in there and I was like, mm, that doesn't look right. That's just too dry. It looks too dry. Trust me, it's not. I have done that with uh, graham cracker crust. I've done that with, uh, <laughs> I've done it with the topping for sweet potato souffle, you name it. I have put way too much butter in it. It ends up being just an awful mess. So now what I like to do is I take that same little rounded Tupperware measuring spoon that I love so good and I just go from the center out to get just a good, even packing. It's almost just like packing sand. And you know, if you don't have this, you can also use like the bottom of your measuring cup. That works good too, your glass measuring cup. And just get that tap down So you don't have to have a lot of fancy equipment, you just don't. And then you can take the back of that spoon and you can just push that up 
into the sides just like that it makes it all pretty and spreads that out even if you have thick spots or thin spots because you worked from the center out with your bowl or your measuring cup or your plastic measuring cup you you're sure that you have a good even firm foundation right here and even if you don't you can recover just like I did because I messed it up. I drug my spoon in there too hard. And you can just go in there and tamp it back down. It does not have to be perfect. You just want to make sure you don't have any really thick spots in your crust. And a lot of times they'll be over here on the side. So you just take that spoon and you can make the necessary corrections. And I like to just take that and just lightly tamp it up the sides of my pie pan. Now, one good thing about this pie is that you can do this in small ramekins too. You don't have to do it in one big pie dish, but we're, I don't like, I don't like cleaning up the kitchen. So one pan, one dish is all I need. And so that's what we're going with. So now this will go into a 375 degree oven and we will cook it for about seven minutes. And so we'll be back to show you the finished crust and we're gonna allow that to cool and we'll come back and we'll mix up the pie filling to go inside, so stay with us. Okay, our pie crust is cooled, so now we are going to show you how to put this delicious cherry cheesecake pie together. We start off with eight ounces of room temperature cream cheese, and we're just gonna blend that with a hand mixer until it's light and fluffy. It won't take but just a second. nice and aerated so to this we're gonna add one 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk Woo, yeah good old stuff you used to make homemade ice cream with but this doesn't taste anything like ice cream <laughs> but the taste of sweetened condensed milk will forever remind me of my granddaddy because he always used to let me lick that top right there <laughs> Now, you can do this by hand if you wish, uh, but I've already got my uh, hand mixer dirty, so I'm gonna just mix the two of these together real quick with my hand mixer. my vanilla in I like to just scrape the sides down just so I can make sure that I got all that cream cheese mixed in with that sweetened condensed milk waste not won't not right so to this we're going to add in a teaspoon of vanilla and yes I eyeballed it after you've been cooking as long as I have you know what a teaspoon looks like <laughs> And take long to mix and now lastly what gives this that fresh cheesecake taste is going to be a third of a cup of lemon juice and it can be fresh squeezed or it can be like I have here which is just right out of the bottle so we add that in and this I promise you it really doesn't taste all that lemony but the lemon with the cream cheese does something and it makes it just 
almost like a science experiment. It makes it like gel up and, and form into a nice creamy, but good and set pie. That is all there is to it. And now we are just going to take our spatula and we are going to put our pie crust over here and it's a little loose around the edges, but you know what? There's not a soul who has ever eaten this pie that cares a thing about that. So you have to choose your hard, right? And for this pie, the crust is not the star of the show. <laughs> the star is the pie itself. So the crust is just like bonus material and if it is loose then so what? Who cares? Nobody cares because all they care about is right here what's in it. So I'm just going to take the back of my spatula and carefully just kind of even that out and push it towards the sides so that we don't pull too much of the sides off because we will, it's graham crackers, no matter how much butter you put in it, you're still gonna have some that are loose. And then I'm just gonna take my finger and just get all that off. And make sure we put it in there, in the pie. Now this is gonna need to set up in the refrigerator for probably about three hours. Three hours to overnight is better. You can loosely cover it with some saran wrap uh, and it'll be just fine. If you're making it the morning of that you need it, you can just loosely cover it with saran wrap and pop it in the fridge for about three hours. But the only bacon that we've done has been the crust. So you could totally do that like days in advance if you wanted to. But this is the foundation for our cherry cheesecake pie. It will set up nice and wonderful and it will become just this wonderful, fresh, not too lemony cheesecake type pie. Then when we're ready to serve it, we'll top it with cherry pie filling because cherries seem to complement the flavors of the pie, but you can use whatever you like. It really just does not matter. So we're gonna allow this to set and then we're gonna come back and top it and cut a slice and serve it and so you can see the finished product. So don't go away, we'll be right back. Hey everybody, we are back. We have finished a three hour chill time and I just couldn't wait any longer. Oh, let me get a fork. <laughs> So we finished a three hour chill time and we actually have company, so I'm gonna give them a sliver of this. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna top it now and it is absolutely perfect. It smells so good, you can't even smell the lemon anymore. So I have a, gosh, I think it's like a 20 ounce can of cherry pie filling and I usually like to err on the side of using about half, but we may just cover the whole top. Usually I can put like half a can in there and then just spread it out and still leave like some of the pie showing around the edges. So it's really pretty either way. You can put it just in the center or you can for half a can or you can use the whole can like I'm going to do because it is a holiday after all or by the time you see this it won't be a holiday anymore but we're going to just cover that whole top with that cherry pie filling and I like to do this right before I serve it just simply because sometimes that pie filling can get a little gelatinous and trust me when I tell you this pie is not gonna last very long it's just not so now I'm gonna cut it and we're gonna cut just a small piece so you can see how gorgeous it is and like 
So the first piece is always the cook's piece, right? And 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 I'll give you bonus points if you want to if you tell me why. <laughs> but you're probably about to see. <laughs> All right, so let's get that out of there. Oh my gosh, y'all! It's like my childhood just comes flooding back. Look at that. So when you slice it with that room temperature pie filling it just kind of drips and drapes over the side but just so you can see after just a three hour chill time y'all that thing sets up perfect and it's delicious and, and i i, I want to take a big old bite of it but i have to talk <laughs> so i've gotten a lot of comments lately about why i don't taste things whenever i make my videos and it's very very simple I don't like to hear not a single soul talk with their mouth full. And my job here at The Buttered Home is to help you by giving you basic instructions, just like using those simple things to pat out that pie crust. Um, you don't have to be a professionally trained chef to be able to be a very good cook. So my goal here at The Buttered Home is to get you in the kitchen and to get you falling in love with cooking again, or either falling in love with cooking for the first time. So in my mind, the instruction that I give is far more important than me tasting the food. Because by the time, well this pie, I've been making since I was a teenager, and I'll be 49 this year. So I know, I know that it tastes okay, so I don't have to taste it. But if you're a new cook, or if you're making something that you've never made before, I encourage you to taste it as you go on. Uh, but this, this doesn't need tasting. This just needs eating. And I'm gonna do that off camera because nobody wants to see me talk with my mouth full. And if I did, my mama would probably whoop my tail. So it's just as simple as that. So y'all, we hope that you do make this Glory Jeans cherry lemon or lemon cherry cherry lemon cheesecake pie and it becomes a fast favorite with your family too if you don't like cherry pie filling use something different because the pie is the same and that's just really decoration so be sure that you head over to the buttered where you can find this recipe and many other wonderful recipes that we share with you and we want you to take and make your own also if you're not already Make sure that you're following us on all of our social channels. We have a real good time and we love talking about cooking. Uh, and we would love for you to join us to do that as well. And as always, if you want all of our videos in one place, make sure that you're subscribed to our YouTube channel where all of our videos are nice and neatly organized and you can easily find exactly what you're looking for. So y'all, we hope that you had a wonderful Easter, and we hope that every once in a while you'll enjoy your dessert first. <laughs> so be back next week, and we will show you a wonderful, light, and healthy way to still get your comfort food in. So from the buttered home to your home, we love you guys. Bye.